LMD going to shoot floor right on the visual. Hello Captains, and welcome to this Aerofly 2 Flight Simulator video. Aerofly recently released Aerofly 2. It is available today on Steam for $49.99. In this video we are going to be taking a look at um, Aerofly 2, and we are going to be critiquing this new flight simulator. At the end of this video I hope that I can provide you with an insight as to whether this flight uh, simulation platform is worth the investment or not. So without further ado, let us begin our review of Aerofly 2 Flight Simulator. Welcome to Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator. We will begin our video today by looking at the settings of Aerofly FS2 then we will go ahead and set up our first flight and fly out of Las Vegas. So, without further ado, let us begin looking at the settings. As you can see, uh, the interface uh, has been completely redes uh, redesigned and it is actually very simple. And this actually indicates that, uh, you know, this flight simulator is really geared towards the casual flight simmers, not the, not somebody who's, you know, advanced or somebody who's looking for, you know, ultra realistic flight dynamics or flight physics. Um, so in the general settings, uh, we have the invert camera control. I leave it at normal flight information. Uh, this is basically a window that appears on the top here that displays the aircraft speed and heading and some other useful information. I normally don't like to have a lot of windows there. It kind of clutters the uh, screen. Approach guide, so this is a particularly useful uh, for new, uh, a new flight simmers uh, to help them, you know, guide them through the approach. Landmarks is simply the points of interest. Uh, labels. Uh, which I always hide as well. Transparency of control elements is set at the middle and the overlay um, again is uh, hide for me. Um, it, it just displays different information about your flight and the location that you're at and so this is the preference uh, for me. In terms of the controls as you can see that uh, uh, the Aerofly FS2 has detected my SADIC X52 flight controller. It's quite simple to set up. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the throttle, uh, the aileron, and elevator were set already. Uh, so the only thing I needed to uh, actually configure was the rudder control and flaps and gear. The flaps and gear uh, are represented by uh, letter F, Shift F for extending and retracting. So I added two joystick buttons to retract and uh, extend flaps and the same thing for uh, the gear. I've also added a, a button for thrust reverser on my joystick. It's uh, easier for me uh, you know, when I land to basically use, uh, use a button for the thrust reversers. In terms of the view 
Um, again, the the uh, the views uh, come all set up for you. Uh, the only thing that I've added here is a zoom. I've added the minus and plus buttons for zooming in and out, uh, as well as a couple of joystick uh, buttons. You can do the same for the autopilot. Uh, you can do the same thing for navigation, lights, and game control. Now, for game control, uh, you have pause, you have informa uh, flight information, a moving map. Uh, normally, these are things I don't really use. I use the pause button, yeah, for sure. Uh, but what's interesting is you've got a couple of buttons here to change the time and visibility. And we will, of course, uh, take a look at this uh, inside the sim uh, in a few moments. Um, so changing the time, if you hit T, it will fast forward. Uh, Shift T will uh, basically um, take you back in time. The visibility, uh, the letter V uh, basically makes the weather uh, or the it actually deteriorates the visibility. And Shift and V will bring you back to, uh, you know, uh, full visibility, uh, basically. Okay, so this is uh, this is the controls. Graphics, in terms of graphics, again, as you can see, it's a very simple, um, a simple window here for our settings. Uh, that's our resolution, uh, limit frame rate. I have this on VSync on uh, to eliminate uh, image tiering. Uh, graphics quality is on ultra, and it was selected by default, so I did not change anything there as this is the highest setting uh, that we uh, could have. Okay, so now that we're done with the settings part, let us go ahead and take a look at, uh, you know, the different uh, conditions that we can set for our flight. We have conditions, navigation, location, aircraft, flight school, and this is where you uh, basically go to start your flight. The flight school is actually... Um, I don't normally like flight schools. Uh, I, I've done a few just kind of to see how it is. Uh, you're, of course, uh, this is your basic, you know, pitch up, pitch down, you know, turn left, turn right, uh, turn right uh, stay at 3,000 feet for 60 seconds, as you can see. You've got about 21 um, lessons here that you can uh, basically practice. Um, let's go to conditions. Uh, the clouds, as you can see here, the visibility is set to high. Uh, I'm going to change the cumulus cloud density and height and the source cloud density and height to the midpoint. That should be fine for our flight. Wind, again, you can set the wind, uh, the strength, the direction, turbulence and thermal activity. Um, so we can say, for example, turbulence here. We'll have about 90 degree from the east and we'll have you know the strength at the midpoint uh, that's always a good uh, good setting uh, now the thing is there there is no real weather okay and I really hope uh, you know that at some point that someone either airfly or uh, someone else would actually develop a real weather injector for for this flight sim. I really think that this flight sim simulator has the potential. Uh, I think it's got it's it's a good baseline uh, simulator, um, but hopefully it will improve uh, with time. Navigation. This is where you basically set up your um, flight plan. Okay, so if you say I'm going to start here, so. I click here on the Grand Canyon National Park and I say I'm going to depart runway 03 and what you can do is you say all right so my next waypoint will be here and finally I'm going to uh, land here at uh, Sedona at runway 03 and this is where I'm going to land this is actually the the runway so you're going to do this funny thing here <laughs> So this is, uh, I think this is from a previous slide, so you can actually delete those if you don't want them, um, all these waypoints. So I can remove, you can go back and remove and adjust, uh, you know, your uh, flight plan. So I can come here and say remove this one as well, and it will redraw your um, flight plan. 
uh, so there you go as you can see it's kind of going all over the place but you know you get the idea this is basically what the plan looks like all right okay so this is navigation and what we're going to do for this flight is we're going to start at uh, my current international airport uh, which is right here that's McCarran International and we'll start at runway 19er right okay right here and we'll select our aircraft now I'll show you let me show you uh, before we select the aircraft there are different aircraft that you can use there's quite a bit actually there's a 16 total aircraft that comes uh, with Airfly FS and let me tell you that the both the exterior and interior models are modeled with 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 some care uh, they actually look pretty good um, I, I think you will really appreciate the texturing uh, work that has gone uh, into these aircraft uh, as you can see we have a 737 we have an Airbus a glider you have the King Air C90 um, and the 747 and of course this is the Cessna this is what we're going to begin our uh, video with so that's the aircraft and we simply hit now on the start button to go into the flight sim. Captains, we are now at uh, McCarran International Airport, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we are in the Cessna 172 and as you can see the cockpit actually looks very nice. Uh, the volumetric shadows, the texturing, the reflection, the instrument reflection as you can see uh, looks very nice. Uh, now, as it is the case with Airfly FS, most of the knobs, actually in Airfly FS, none of the knobs work. In Airfly FS 2, the improvements um, are quite big. You can actually, uh, you have an, uh, a workable autopilot, so you can actually turn on the autopilot. Your nav radios actually work, uh, and you can switch the frequencies and whatnot. Um, um, unfortunately not everything is modeled so here let me try to yeah that doesn't work so and that doesn't work yeah so this definitely work or, uh, definitely works so some things work some things don't um, the mixture and of course does not work the flaps work um, the switches in the, the master uh, switch do not work, uh, but I think there since we get the you know the, the hand, it's probably something that's planned for a future improvement. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and set 10 degree of flaps, and let's go ahead and take off. As you can see, it's very smooth. Okay, we're coming up to 60 knots. Right, 60 knots and rotate. Mm. Well, it does feel a bit... Uh, Alright, let's retract the flaps. All right, let's look over here. That's definitely Las Vegas. Okay, so in term in terms of the actual aircraft, it actually looks very nice from the inside. And we'll switch to external view in just a moment here. Hey, like let me make a turn here. The volumetric shadows uh, are really very well done. They look very, very nice. Okay. And the instrument reflections, the shine here on the yokes, um, it looks really good. It looks absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, in Aerofly FS, they use um, aerial imagery, so this is all photoreal. Uh, you will not see any traffic, though, so there are no uh, cars or anything like that. These are all real images, it looks like. They were captured at some point and used here in the sim. Um, 
Also, as far as Autogen, other than trees, in most of the areas you will not find anything. But this is the area. The areas around airports are modeled with a lot of care, I'll tell you. Now, this is Las Vegas, okay? And this looks actually like the Las Vegas uh, Strip. Yeah, let me reduce power here a bit. All right. Okay, let me go ahead and switch to external view. Okay, as you can see, the aircraft itself looks very good. Uh, the shine here, the propeller, the reflection on the glass, it looks very, very good, actually. Even the fuselage uh, it looks very nice. Right? You go here, as you can see, the fuselage looks very nice. Look at the amount of detail. I believe that's the Excalibur, Excalibur Hotel. Um, look at that. That's the Luxor. Isn't that great? That looks absolutely stunning. Very, very nice. Uh, the scenery looks absolutely incredible. Okay. All right. So let's uh, test a couple of features here. Uh, first thing, let's let's pause the uh, let's pause the video here and take a look. As you can see. The cloud representation is very nice, and by the way, if you notice here, the clouds are actually moving. And uh, this is very nice. It's modeled. Uh, it, it's modeled in a nice way. I'm not sure exactly about, you know, they they look mm, somewhat realistic. I must say, somewhat realistic. They're not uh, hundred percent, but they look very good, uh, indeed. And so you have those moving clouds, which kind of adds, uh, you know, to the realism. Now, let me show you what uh, the uh, visibility. Now, if you hit, now I'm hitting on the V uh, keyboard button. As you can see now, the visibility has deteriorated. Okay. And if I hit on Shift and V, I'll bring it back to the crisp uh, visibility. So we've got unlimited, almost unlimited visibility. Okay. Also, uh, you can cycle the time. So I'm going to go ahead and make it look at that. Wow. Look at that. That looks absolutely incredible. That looks very, very nice. Yeah. Right. Let me switch back here and let's unpause the video and let's look down here from the aircraft. Look at that. That looks very nice, indeed. Yeah, right, let me try to let me try to come just dip down here just to show you. It looks very nice. Yeah, Paris, Paris. Yeah, it looks very nice, and uh, the the lighting uh, around the uh, the area here looks very nice. But as you can see that beyond the area, the, the immediate surrounding area of the airport, there are no lights at night, except for the airports, okay? But uh, I must say that uh, it looks very nice, yes. Okay. All right, let me uh, bring this uh, back a notch here. All right, now let's look at those volumetric shadows. Look at that, man. It looks very, very nice. Look at that. Switch to uh, external view again. Yeah, those shadows look very nice. Lens flare. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to probably switch an aircraft, switch the aircraft, and switch the location, and show you something. Uh, something else, uh, but I'm sure that you agree with me that this looks very nice. It looks very convincing uh, It is not something that I would Probably fly every day. It's probably a uh, Again, it's good for the casual simmer uh, Simply because it does not really have all the features that you know uh, That you'd want to see but it's a good start for sure. It looks good. It flies very well 
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, switch to another aircraft. All right, Captain. So I've switched. Uh, I've switched the aircraft, and as you can see, we're going through some. I. I. What I want to show you is what happens when we go through the clouds. Okay. So let's see here. Right. Let's see what happens here. Look at that. Look at how smooth it is as you go through the clouds. And I think this is very well done. It's far better than any actually flight simulator I've seen. The way uh, we, you pass through the clouds in Aerofly FS is really done uh, to perfection. Looks very convincing uh, while you, uh, you know, while you go through the clouds. All right, let me show you uh, something else, and uh, perhaps we go to a mountainous area and show how how it looks. Okay. All right, captains, uh, we're flying over Palm Springs now in California, and I've reduced the amount of clouds so that we can see. Um, all right, let me change the time as well, and as you can see now that uh, the scenery looks absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, look at that. By the way, while you're inside the... Uh, uh, while you're inside the uh, flight deck, you can press 1 to cycle through. So here, let's cycle through the... through the views. wing view there. And FO seat. Look at the uh, look at the propeller. That looks really nice. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is uh, is basically uh, take one of the other aircraft, maybe the heavies, uh, maybe we'll take the 747, and let's try to uh, take off from uh, Los Angeles uh, International Airport and see how that goes. All right. Okay, captains, uh, we are in the 747-400. As you can see, uh, the overhead panel and the... Uh, the flight deck is uh, modeled to look very similar to uh, to a 747, and high resolution textures. Really, um, everything looks nice. Uh, it's not. Again, the knobs do not work. Um, you you can of course set your frequencies. I'm still not sure if they actually work, or it's just uh, for future enhancements. Um, I would expect that uh, probably. Uh, the ILS, you can set the nav uh, frequency because, uh, as you saw, we can select uh, runways with ILS uh, with ILS approach. So, let's go ahead and set flaps 10. I believe that's flaps 10. Okay, let's switch to external view. Take a look at this aircraft. Okay, as you can see, the flaps are ex being extended now. Looks very nice again. The model, the texturing. Uh, it looks like they put in um, a lot of work into this uh, into this uh, flight simulator. All right, so let's go ahead and take off. sound isn't great, but it's not bad. Right, 140 knots, I think that's good enough. Let's go ahead and rotate.
Very positive break. Gear up. The gear is actually up. Alright, let me just pitch here. Um, well, it's not very realistic, I'll tell you. It doesn't feel like you're flying a Boeing 747. But <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking for fun, uh, I think this is a lot of fun. I think this simulator is a lot of fun. Um, as you can see, the Los Angeles airport is, uh, again, modeled. Uh, this looks pretty much like Los Angeles airport, so it does look, it does look nice. The surrounding area here looks very nice. And then you've got darkness all over, and there's something over there. So let me go ahead and turn. Uh, okay, let's switch here. Let's make a turn. It does feel kind of heavy a bit, so it's it's a little different than flying the uh, the Cessna. Uh, so I guess they do fly different, but I'm not sure that it flies like a, a Boeing. It does definitely doesn't feel uh, you know as heavy as as a Boeing. So let's go ahead and track the flaps. Yeah. Alright, let's, uh, let's check the views here on this uh, aircraft. We have now reached the conclusion of our video, and here are my final remarks on Aerofly FS2 Flight Simulator. It is definitely a platform that is suitable for the casual flight simmer for somebody who wants to begin with flight simulation. Um, it definitely is a huge improvement over Aerofly FS. Uh, it looks stunning in terms of the visuals, the aerial imagery, representation of day and night, sky colors, texturing, uh, looks very good. The a variety of aircraft that it offers is actually very good. Uh, so it is jam-packed with, um, with airports. Uh, there are about 180 of them. Uh, very detailed surroundings uh, of the airports uh, and as well as the te texturing inside the aircraft I think is also done uh, with a lot of thought. Um, is this a flight simulator? Um, it kind of is, um, but again, it, if, if you're a seasoned uh, flight simmer and you're very serious about flight simulation, I think this is going to be kind of, you know, a bit arcade for you. Uh, I don't think that you will really enjoy flying in, in Aerofly FS uh, if you're one of the you know, serious flight simmers. If you're using X-Plane or Prepared, uh, then I think uh, you will, I think, appreciate flying in a world that looks very real. As you can see, uh, the realistic um, you know, aerial imagery uh, makes this sim look very nice, uh, very convincing in terms uh, of the looks, the visuals. Uh, but in terms of what it offers, in terms of actual flight simulation, I think it really lacks in that department. Um, the price. So it is available on Steam today for $49.99. Is this a fair price for this uh, software? Well, let me put it this way. If this is going to be, I, I haven't read the roadmap and I definitely do not have access to the um, Aerofly um, FS2 roadmap, but if the intention is to upgrade and update uh, this simulator uh, in the future to include more, um, you know, for example, navigational systems, uh, maybe FMC um, add-ons uh, that will improve the f actual flight simulation um, aspect of this uh, of the sim. I think the price is worth it. Uh, if it's, if it, if the destiny of Airfly FS2 is going to end up just like Airfly FS1. 
or the previous uh, predecessor of this uh, of this uh, platform, then definitely the price is, is not worth it. Folks, I hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I hope that it's been a useful review for you and I hope that it can help you form your own opinion uh, about Airfly FS2 Flight Simulator. Until next time, folks, please take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you so very much for watching and bye-bye for now.